For example, my country bumpkin character, Mortimer Snurd, has a voice that is lower than my own, and it is not a pressure voice. That is, it doesn't possess the ventriloquial drone. It's back in the mouth rather than up behind the front teeth. So he sounds like this. Oh, there was an old woman who lived in a shoe. This makes him sound stupid, which is what I want, because he looks stupid. And I want all my dummies to have voices that fit their faces and dialogue to fit their personalities. If you find it difficult to get this pressure on your voice, then I suggest you try the falsetto. Do you understand, Mortimer? Oh, no, no, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what a, what a falsetto is. Well, I'll show you. It sounds like this. Now. Well, that sounds like yodeling. Well, <laughs> that is in a way, yes. Now, if you can't get the pressure on the voice like this, uh, one, two, three, four, you know, for the dummy, then just speak the lines in a voice that is higher or lower than your natural speaking voice. So it will sound like, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is not really throwing the voice, as I've said before. But with the dummy beside you, it does create the illusion that your partner is speaking and works very well because there's no need to create the illusion of distance. When you find a voice that is best for you, the voice you feel most comfortable with, you should practice using it 15 or 20 minutes at a time. If your throat muscles become a little tired, rest them. Then return to your practicing. Well, how can you talk with your mouth closed, Mr. Bergen? Well, you don't. As you practice a little each day, start doing the ventriloquial voice, that is, the dummy voice, with the lips and teeth slightly apart. The lips should be in a natural, relaxed position. When you have mastered this ventriloquial voice with the lips and teeth slightly apart, we will take up the second lesson, speaking without moving the lips. Now, this is not easy. At first, it may seem impossible to pronounce certain words without moving the lips. But when you learn the secret of substituting one sound for another, pronunciation becomes relatively easy. You see, we, we cheat a little. I shall not stoop to cheating. <laughs> Since when, Charlie? <laughs> it is quite easy to say these letters without moving your lips. A, C, D, E, G, H, I, J, K, L, O, Q, R, S, T, U, X, Y, Z. The letters that will give you trouble are B, F, M, P, V, and W. When we say F like in Frank or V like in Violet, we use our lower lip against our upper teeth. Try it once and see how you form the letters F and V. Now, when we don't want to move our lips, we substitute the tongue for the lower lip, and as it touches the edge of your upper teeth, we get the sound of F like in Ethel. Eth sounds quite like F. In words like Francis, Fido, and Father, the F will take a TH sound, like in thanks, and the word Francis becomes Francis, and Fido becomes Thido, and Father... Father becomes your uncle. All right, all right, all right. No, Father becomes Father, Francis, Fido, and Father. But try to make the words sound like they were being pronounced correctly. The letter V will take the sound of V like in the house. So the word valley becomes thalley. T-H, thalley. And vanilla would be pronounced chocolate. All right, stop that. <laughs> vanilla would be pronounced vanilla. Practice in front of a mirror. Now let us deal with some other troublesome letters. You can clear up the trouble with the letter B, like in boy, by substituting TH again, like in thank you, or D, like in dear. So the letter B in the word butter would really be spoken as thutter or dutter. For the letter P, like in Peter, we ventriloquists say T, like in teacup or T-H, like in thanks. That means Peter would be pronounced as teeter or theater. 
For W, I would say duddle oo, duddle oo. Now listen to this sentence. It is a very difficult sentence to say without moving your lips, but it's good practice because it has the letters F, M, B, and P. Francis, may I have some bread and butter, please? Now, I didn't say Francis, and I didn't say bread or butter. I didn't say please, but the audience will think that I did because I tried to come as close as possible to the correct pronunciation without moving my lips. I said, Francis, nay, I have sun, bread, and butter, please. You may say that mother doesn't sound much like mother, or that funkin' fi doesn't sound like pumpkin pie, but when you use your problem words in a sentence that carries a meaning for the audience, the problem works out fine. Now listen to this. Mother made a funkin' thigh. I didn't say mother or maid or pumpkin pie. Oh, you know, you know that reminds me, Mr. Birkin, the, the, when, when I run errands for the bakery, the lady gives me a piece of pie. She does? Yeah. Well, is that customary? Oh, no, it's, it's huckleberry. Oh. <laughs> yes, that's very interesting, yes. Now, what was I talking about? Oh, I don't know. I wasn't listening either. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, lip control. You will need more than a week or a month to master the art of speaking without moving your lips, but you will be happily surprised at what you are able to do after you've practiced a while. Always try to avoid having to pronounce difficult words by rewriting your dialogue and substituting other words. For example, if you have a line like Miss Millicent Bubble Dribble went to Philadelphia, change it to Helen Jones went to Detroit if it doesn't spoil the joke. It is better for the ventriloquist to take the long speeches. He should set up the jokes, let the dummy give the payoff lines, and get the laughs. Just as you practice holding your lips still when you're talking for the dummy, so should you practice exaggerating your own mouth movements when you are speaking as yourself. The dummy's mouth movement should fit the words he is saying. Look in the mirror and read the dummy's lines and see how your jaw moves. In words like summertime and vacation, the jaw should open twice for each word. One more thing, establish plenty of voice separation so dummy and ventriloquist do not sound alike to the audience. Let me give you an example. Charlie, are you listening? Yes, I'm all ears. Now that is not good. Now we separate the voices a little more and it sounds like this. Charlie, are you listening? Yes, Thurgan, I'm all ears. That is much better. Now let me say a little more on another phase of ventriloquism, the distant voice. This is the voice we use in fooling our friends by talking to someone in the basement, in the next room, or outside the house. This is the most difficult voice to do, and I suggest you attempt this later on. Start with the dummy voice and near ventriloquism. For the distant voice, we use more pressure on the vocal cords than is used for the dummy voice, and the greater the pressure, the greater is the effect of distance. Let me show you. Remember the dummy voice, that is near ventriloquism. We use this sound. 30 days has September. The distant voice sounds like this. 30 days has September. It is very important that the attention of the audience must always be attracted to the place where the voice is coming from. This can be done by looking out the window or listening at the door and so forth. In the next demonstration, Imagine I'm standing at a third floor window talking to two men on the street below. I will use five voices in this demonstration. My own voice, two distant voices of Joe and Ole Svensson on the street below, and the two dummy voices of Charlie and Mortimer in the room with me. Hey, Bergen, that looks like Joe down there. Well, so it does. Hiya, Joe. Hiya, Bergen. Well, say, how about a game of golf today? Yeah, say, maybe we can get another fella to play. Well, I can ask Ole. Say, that's a good idea. Ask Ole Swenson. Hey, Ole. Yo, what is it? You want to big off? Yo, sure, you bet you. Well, what did he say? It's okay. It's okay. Well, Charlie, would you like to caddy for us today? I'm busy. Why don't you try and buy it in there? Mortimer, would you like to caddy for us? Oh, sure. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. All right. Hey, Joe, Mortimer will caddy for us. No, no, not Mortimer, no. 